Let's talk about the most important thing in the world. The most fundamental thing in our lives. The thing we need most. The thing we most enjoy. It is the tool that makes us human. It's the greatest invention of all time, and it actually made us human. It is the power to dismantle and recreate natural objects. The more you understand about those things, the better you know how they're going to behave when you try to transform them. It is also the way we coexist with other beings. Very sort of ancient symbiotic relationship that we've had with microbes before humans even existed. And finally, it is the method of understanding this world. Taste is maybe one of the most fundamental sensory experiences you can have to stay alive and survive in the world. We encounter it three times a day. It is cooking. This did not happen by chance. We break, tear, crush, and crumble. Until it becomes something entirely new. The story I'm about to tell you now changed the entire course of human history and may continue to change it. It is a story about an amazing power. This man is crazy about pasta. Pasta is my life. Pasta is sculpture. Pasta is also architecture. Pasta is everything. From its very simple beginnings of wheat flour and water, at the very beginning, mixing of batter. It is in the balance and formula. In the balance, it's struggling for extensibility and elasticity. And the beauty is in the middle. Dough is a strange substance. It cannot be explained with classical physics. Think about dough. If I take it and I roll it up into a ball, I can bounce it on the table. That's like a ball. But if I let it sit there for a while, it spreads. It's like a fluid. Dough can be formed into any shape. So to say there are a definitive amount of pasta shapes is next to impossible. And there are shapes being born every day. Because every shape, every orecchiette, every tortellini, every spaghetto is a fingerprint of the pasta maker.
So pasta for me is everything, period. Dough can be formed into all sorts of shapes and sizes because of a special substance inside. It is called gluten. Gluten forms from the combination of two different proteins in wheat. A network, a kind of material that's both elastic, which means you can pull on it and it stretches, but it's also plastic, which means that it'll, if you hold it like that for a while, it'll stay there. Because of the nature of gluten, Pasta comes in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Each type of pasta has been made to absorb all the different sauces in the best possible way. As you knead the dough, it creates an amazing substance that allows it to be shaped in whatever form. Many countries have turned this dough into something that best suits their food culture. Some foods end up representing an entire city. La pizza napoletana è la, è la storia della città di Napoli. Quindi è l'identità di un popolo, l'identità di una città, la mia storia. Mio padre che non c'è più, di mia madre, eh, i miei fratelli sono pizzaiuoli. Come soprannome. Il talebano della pizza napoletana. Credente assoluto della vera pizza napoletana. Non esiste la pizza perfetta. Esiste la pizza dove gli errori vengono ridotti. Dobbiamo tenere cinque caratteristiche. La sofficità. L'elasticità. La resistenza, le alveolature all'interno con l'aria, quindi dobbiamo infulsare l'aria. E deve essere all'esterno molto liscio. Quindi la tecusura uniforme è veramente importante. Diventa come la, uh, la seta, perfetto. I prodotti della nostra terra si mettono in un forno a legna. fatto di mattoni a 465 gradi E in 50-60 secondi, wow! la magia si, si avvera e c'è la pizza calda e fragante. Pizza is efficient as all the ingredients are cooked at once, all for one bite. It's easy to make and to eat. 
Sometimes a region's unique environment and gluten meet to create an entirely new food. This amazing landscape was created by water. The Yellow River flowed for thousands of years, transforming this limestone terrain. The water here is rich in calcium compounds. This makes the water more alkaline. It is because of this very water that led to the creation of this region's specialty. When alcoholic water meets dough, it changes the characteristic of the dough. As a result, it gives it an amazing new quality. It becomes extremely stretchy. Every time it's pulled, the strands double. This is the magic created by gluten and alcoholic water. Noodles are an innovative food. It's the result of processing a natural substance into something new. Gluten is something that creates new shapes and new textures. It all depends on how you use it. Gongi Gluten gives dough its elasticity. It can be stretched and do many times its original size. The elasticity of gluten also led to the creation of another food. It is something that humans have eaten for a very long time. Le pain, c'est la base de notre alimentation, nous les Français. On ne mange pas sans pain. Le pain, c'est la vie. 
C'était pouvoir aussi euh, m'exprimer, exprimer ma façon d'être. Enfin, voilà, c'est aussi la passion de cuisiner, c'est l'éducation que j'ai reçue à la campagne. Here, they make bread in a traditional way. They begin by kneading the dough to create gluten. The most important process begins now. Bakers invisible to our eyes start doing their work. The yeast inside the dough becomes active, releasing carbon dioxide. The stretchy gluten begins to rise from the pressure. Microorganisms are blowing a gluten balloon. Through this process, tiny pockets of air are formed inside the dough. Pour savoir si un levain est toujours bon, si les, euh, la texture, quand on le touche, l'odeur, le côté acidulé, on l'a, ça, ça pique un peu le nez. Le goût aussi, c'est très, très piquant en bouche. Once the microorganisms are done with the dough, it is time to finish the job. When the dough goes into the oven, another amazing transformation happens. When the air inside the pockets and the dough is heated, it expands rapidly, making the bread rise. At the same time, the surface turns brown from the Maillard reaction. It creates a soft texture and savory flavor all at the same time. These air pockets make the bread soft and fluffy. Bread has not changed much in the 5,000 years since it was first made. Gluten is truly something magical. If we couldn't make gluten, many of the foods we know now would not even exist. However, gluten is not a nutrient that we absolutely need for survival. Other grains like rice and corn and barley don't form gluten. This is something that's very special to wheat. What we need from cereal grains is actually something else. It's a key substance found in all grains. It's starch. The most important ones certainly is starch, because uh, starch is a carbohydrate. But these grains are very difficult to digest if they are eaten raw. Oh, this is really the most important thing to do in the body. It's a really important thing to do in the body. The process of cooking basically explodes these little grains, it opens them up. It means that the carbohydrate chains inside the grain are exposed to the axis. The pounding process breaks the starch granules apart and then forces the amylopectin molecules to interact with each other. By doing that pounding, what you're doing is developing the network of starch molecules. The more you knead the rice cake dough, 
the stickier it becomes. Elasticity and resistance to being pulled that gives mochi that wonderful chewy texture. Bread, rice cakes, and noodles. Humans have processed hard grains into entirely new forms to eat. This is how we have gained nutrients from grains. Humans eat a tremendous amount of grains from grasses, whether it's uh, wheat or corn or rice or barley or oats or spelt or whatever the grasses are. Humans eat a tremendous amount of starch, which makes us unusual among the apes. We are the only anthropoid apes that consume grains. It may not seem like a big deal, but it actually is. It is this ability that is deeply related to the greatest invention made by humankind. So that we come to um, actually prefer the foods through evolution, which has been shaped by our own behavior, which is agriculture. Humans are the only beings on Earth that farm. And this is because of our ability to process cereal grains. Processing natural foods is also very important for people who do not farm. Nomads who have been living in barren environments have a secret method that has been handed down. There is only one step left. When the board is entirely dry, it is pounded until it becomes a fine powder. The Mongolians use boards in a variety of dishes. Processing meat to make it tender appears in various cultures.
Each food has different characteristics, but the fundamentals are the same. There is a big difference between food that is eaten as a lump or food that has been broken down into small particles, then the enzymes have quick access. And so the whole process of digestion becomes faster and more efficient. In many dishes, making the physical properties more tender is the key to cooking. Food that is tender is easier to digest and enables you to obtain more energy from it. Preferring tender food is something instinctive, as is preferring food that has been cooked. However, there are some foods that cannot be explained in this way. One general texture, which is the softness of fat, that's part of what we like. Now, there are other textures that many people get to like. Uh, a crunchiness is very popular around the world. We like crispy things. But why we like crispy things is still a mystery. One interesting possible evolutionary background in it is that most of the foods that appealed, probably appealed to our ancestors weren't very crisp. Crispy things that exist in nature are hard and uncomfortable to eat. And it might not taste good, but if it appealed, if crispiness appealed to you, crunchiness, then you would eat those foods. So that would be selected for in evolution. If you can enjoy eating what other entities cannot, there exists a higher chance of survival. Among those, there are some that are especially crispy. They are insects. Insects are a pretty low value food. But if you have nothing else to eat, that's not bad if you can get access to them. Then that crispy crunchiness means, oh, that's not so bad. If by eating it, that's what allowed your ancestors, you know, your ancestors ate it when there was nothing better to eat. And so these fallback foods may be really important um, for survival. We are descendants of such surviving entities. Crispy food is a gift passed down from our ancestors' survival instincts. การบริโภคการทานอาจจะดูแบบทานยากหน่อยครับครับเพราะว่าอย่างเราก็เห็นนะครับว่าทำให้มันกรอบแตกต่างกับตามสเตทฟู้ดครับเราวิถีวิถันครับ is still a culture of eating insects in some areas Perhaps we still can't forget that crispiness However, we don't really need to eat insects. That is because we can create crunchy textures. Fried food. I was looking at the chicken in the past, the most important thing in the world is 집약돼 있는 어떤 첨단 요리다라고 좀 정의를 좀 하고 싶습니다. 
덴푸라는 상당히 좀 고난도의 기술이 요하는 튀김 요리라고 말씀드릴 수 있겠네요. 目で追いない部分が非常にあるんですよ。それは音によって我々はその中を見通していくわけです。水の音はシューという中を行う。The crispiness of the tempera is made when the moisture that meets the hot oil evaporates explosively. As the moisture evaporates, it creates an empty space in the batter. This is called porous structure. So fried food isn't just about cooking ingredients. It is the process of forming a porous structure and creating a crispy texture that doesn't exist naturally. Creating new textures and forms is the power of cooking. But there are people who approach cooking in a slightly different way. The idea is not to do how we do things, it's the why we do things. La cuisine, si on regarde d'un point de vue scientifique, eh bien, c'est des molécules qui s'assemblent, qui se déplient, qui s'accrochent entre elles. Et donc, finalement, parce qu'on comprend le pourquoi des choses, on peut mieux maîtriser les préparations, et puis ensuite, on peut innover, c'est-à-dire faire des choses différentes. It is completely different from traditional recipes. Quand on regarde la cuisine, c'est vrai qu'on peut... C'est un assemblage, finalement, de molécules, c'est un assemblage de textures, c'est un assemblage de saveurs. Bien, il va falloir transformer les aliments pour les rendre fondants, honteux, croquants, croustillants. Il y avait la peau de l'orange, la partie blanche, qui sont des grandes molécules qu'on appelle la pectine, qui peut s'accrocher avec elle et faire une confiture instantanée. Et on a besoin de zéro sucre, zéro cuisson presque. Vous avez ces très grandes chaînes. On voit une algue d'ailleurs, ça ressemble à du plastique. Eh bien, essayons d'utiliser ces algues pour faire des enrobages. Alors, on a fait des petites billes de menthe. Et au moment où vous croquez, vous découvrez le liquide à l'intérieur. C'est pas du tout remettre en cause la tradition, les anciennes recettes, tout ce qu'ont fait nos, nos ancêtres, mais savoir un regard différent, nouveau, moderne vers la cuisine d'aujourd'hui. Many recently developed recipes are not created in the kitchen, but in a lab. Hemos trabajado con muchísima gente en el ámbito y seguimos trabajando en el ámbito de la ciencia. Poner una mirada que va más allá de las cosas de una manera formal, ¿no? Porque se nos había enseñado, porque básicamente se nos habían dicho que las cosas eran de una determinada forma. Y ahí es cuando tuvimos que empezar a trabajar con eh, azúcares tecnológicos. Construir una cáscara de huevo con estos azúcares en lo más fina posible. The most famous menu here, fake eggs. Y luego lo que hacemos es ensayo de error. Muchas veces ensayo de error hasta que llegamos al punto que a nosotros nos interesa. Es 
como si nosotros, de alguna forma, te dijera, nosotros hacemos y una vez que lo tenemos hecho, volcamos todo nuestro conocimiento para eh, darle sentido. Tearing down the ingredient to a molecular level and reconstructing it into a whole new texture and form, it's what we call molecular cuisine. This technique opened a new area of cooking. De esta cocina que llaman molecular, que nosotros llamamos cocina creativa, y teníamos esta necesidad de expresarla, ¿no? A partir de aquí montamos. Aparte de todas estas experiencias, creíamos que la gente cuando iba a un restaurante iba a disfrutar, ¿no? What represents this restaurant is its dish that uses olives. No, que tú la ves y, y ves una aceituna verde normal, que en realidad es una elaboración que, que simula una aceituna que es crujiente y líquida. Unos trozos de caballa marinada para dar más textura y más consistencia al plato. Ponemos también un jugo de piparra. Y es un plato pues muy sencillo, es un merengue de remolacha con todo el sabor a remolacha y un poquito crujiente por fuera, ¿no? Pero tiene una característica que lo servimos enterrado en sésamo negro y cuando llega a la mesa se agita y sale de la tierra, ¿no? They attempt various dishes that interpret traditional dishes in a new way. Que cuando la comes uh, te explotan en el interior de la boca, ¿no? Es una membrana gelatinosa con con muchas bolitas de pesto, o sea que convertimos una textura de pasta en salsa, para así decirlo. Modern chefs are now utilizing the methods of molecular cuisine. There is a big difference between cuisine today and cuisine from 100 years ago. What we know as cooking may adopt a completely different meaning in the future. Il faut savoir que quand je l'ai proposé, les gens étaient très très en colère contre moi. J'ai même eu des menaces de mort, euh, une lettre de menaces de mort. Aujourd'hui, ça se développe dans le monde entier, en particulier. Euh, Vous avez une carotte et que cette carotte n'est pas très sucrée. Les cuisiniers, ils ont l'habitude de mettre du sucre dedans. Le sucre, c'est du saccharose, c'est-à-dire c'est un composé pur. Un jour, je me suis dit, mais pourquoi ne pas cuisiner avec seulement des composés Prenez la musique, par exemple. Il y a, il y a trois siècles, on jouait du violon, euh, on jouait de la flûte. Et il y a un siècle, les physiciens ont commencé à analyser le son. C'est-à-dire qu'on voit qu'il y a du 440 Hz, 441, 442, 440, des harmoniques, des fondamentaux, etc. Et il y a 50 ans, on a inventé la musique de synthèse. Bon, aujourd'hui, la musique de synthèse, elle est partout. Et bien, la cuisine, c'est pareil. Je me suis dit, mais on, on a des aliments où, où il y a le goût du citron, de la carotte, du machin. Alors, ces aliments, on les a analysés, on les connaît parfaitement. Hein? This is not a recipe that just exists in the imagination. Et la cunota note, ça veut dire cuisiner sans fruits, sans légumes, sans viande, sans poisson, seulement avec des composés purs. Par exemple, de l'eau, de la cellulose, des triglycérides, euh, des protéines, etc. Voilà. Can we really make a dish only with compounds? Can we call it cooking? A state-sponsored experiment is underway here. No, but no, it's actually cooking with compounds. 
can't use meat tissue and plant tissue in note by note cooking. Uh, in terms of sometimes that you suddenly take away all the meat tissue or plant tissue, people couldn't adopt too fast. So we play with 80% ratio and 20% ratio. We have to so-called break down the radish, that means separate the liquid and then after that use the fibre back again. Of course, texture is one of the most important things that we need to take care of, be it crispy, uh, soggy, um, airy, from there. Everything goes in. The rest of the taste and smell, we could actually use compound to so-called replace it. So for me, the challenge I have right now with note by note cuisine is getting the texture. Because we're using pure compounds, no fibre inside, so that's a way that we want to introduce fibre into note by note cuisine. However, we are still on that journey on perfecting it. You can actually use albumin powder to make it instead of using fresh egg whites and you will achieve the exact same texture and same flavour coming out. Okay. Radish cake has already gelled up already, so it's still very firm. Right? Better than the original one would not be comparable. But of course, if we are trying to prove in certain things like functional way, that would probably be the, the, the direction that we want to go to. What we want to do in this dish is basically combine everything together so you get the whole artichoke, which is zero waste. Having pure compounds, pure flavours, your time your manpower needed is cut by a lot. A lot easier to transport, a lot better for producers. This dessert is, is just to let you see how we can actually um, make something nice, just like a very fascinating one, but using dehydrated uh, ingredients like compounds. Note by note cooking to me is basically an art that can help human nature. This new cooking technique is not just for pleasure on the table. It may possibly be the most important thing for us. In a country with little food production, the state is supporting this cooking technique. For example, if, if today I have a disaster, I have a natural disaster and my crops are gone. I have uh, no more eggs, I have uh, no more um, vegetables, then how do I survive? I have no more poultry, no, no, no fresh produce anymore. How do I start, how do I cook? Alors je dis pas qu'il y aura pas de viande et de poisson. Et je dis simplement que il va falloir faire organiser un système culinaire très différent. This is an extension to the path of survival that humans have walked on. We have transformed and processed substances through cooking. We have become beings that can create food in any environment. Thanks to the power of dismantling and recombining natural objects, we have become the most prosperous beings in the history of the Earth. That story does not end here. 
2050, qu'est-ce que vous allez manger Est-ce qu'on va être capable, est-ce que l'humanité va être capable de produire des protéines pour 10 milliards d'êtres humains C'est pas sûr, hein We have become too prosperous a species, and now we may have to find a new path. In the future, cooking may mean something completely different. But cooking has always been that way. Cooking was the process of creating something new in order for mankind to survive. And as we have always done so, we will open up more possibilities. For a long time, I have thought that cooking is what we make. But there is food that can only be completed with the help of something special. It is invisible to the eye, but it holds tremendous power. The most complex and subtle recipe that uses microorganisms. It is fermentation.